Hi, Savannah. This is Neil from Dorkaholics, where we believe that there's a dork in everyone. And it's our job to bring that dork out into the world. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, just to kick things off, what made you a dork growing up? So many things. What did make me a dork? Um, I guess, I mean, at the time, I was a drama kid, and I was in band. A lot of people don't know this about me, but I was also in Sea Cadets, so that probably definitely added me to the dork list. <laughs> I mean, sea cadet, from Sea Cadet now to um, Vampirus, what is it, Chieftain? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about, about your character this season? I know we ended beat season one feeling like going, I think they're friends now. I hope they're friends. <laughs> What's going on? Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, season one, we definitely got to see a little bit harder side of Angela. Um, she was in her, her queen tings. And now <laughs> she's a little bit more, um, I definitely say by the end of season one, Angela kind of warmed up slightly, slightly to the idea of Reginald and Maurice. I think they definitely reminded her of some human elements that she had long forgotten and pushed away. And I think that's also why she was so aggressively against them in the first season. I think she, I mean, you even saw it with the, you know, the episode with Maurice and his mother. She genuinely didn't quite understand why he was so angry with her over turning her, his mom, and then killing her. Um, she didn't really quite understand that because it had been such a long time since she'd been a human that she was like, but this makes sense type of thing, very logical. And they kind of brought more of a human aspect back into Angela. And by the time season two comes around, she's reluctant, very reluctant, but has kind of figured out that things are actually a little bit easier when you have a team and like people around you that are like you. And it's a little bit easier when it's not you versus the world, so. Any interesting moments that we can look forward to? Ooh. Angela definitely yeah, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of interesting parts with Angela. There was a, there's a lot of times when I was reading the scripts um, for season two that I was like, oh, this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, she kind of ends up playing with the grimoire a lot. So we get to see some interesting aspects of that. Get to see Angela speak Latin and try and mess around with magic, which is interesting. I feel like it's something that she probably heard about a lot and never really got her hands on it. And now she's like, Ooh, let me try all of those things that I heard about back in the day. Um, there's aspects of that. There's definitely um, kind of a psychological breakdown of Angela that I thought was really um, interesting and exciting to play and get to see Angela in a more vulnerable state. So you get to see kind of uh, different shades of Angela, which I think is just interesting in general. Hmm. And can you describe season two in three words? Three words, season two, three words. Um, dark, blatty, and angelic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a curveball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I always get, you guys always throw curve. You guys always throw the curveball at me when you ask me to describe it in three words. I never know. Because I don't want to say the three words over and over again. So I have to figure out, yeah, that's always hard. Mm -hmm. I'm an over explained so just three words is hard for me and then one last curveball which character would you want to switch roles with oh which character would I want to switch roles with hmm that is a very difficult one to answer um maybe Nikki Nikki's a lot of fun but then I feel like she's also very similar <laughs> to Angela she's crazy but like in like a different way like kooky kind of crazy um yeah Nikki or even maybe even Todd because he's got some like golden retriever energy that's really fun <laughs> oh sweet Todd <laughs> sweet sweet Todd <laughs> oh, he's so sweet Todd my goodness yeah 
every time I see that kid on camera, I'm always like, oh, Todd. <laughs> he just wants to be part of the group so bad. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of um, a dodo. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't even remember, like, is he fully aware of what's going on or is he just their blood boy? You know, I mean, definitely probably a lack of iron has definitely probably done some things to him, but he's there. He's just so sweet. He just has the best intentions. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Savannah. I'm looking forward to watching the rest of season two of Reginald the Vampire. Thank you so much for having me. It was nice talking to you.